Thank you very much for attending this session. Today I'm going to talk about a couple of basic concepts in Excel. I will talk about relative referencing, absolute referencing, and mixed referencing when we combine absolute and relative together. I use three examples to explain the situation. In the first example, I do have quantity sold and I do have the price and I want to multiply them by each other and write it over there. I really don't need to go through all of these rows and write the same equation as I may need to do it with a calculator. Go here, equal to the cell 2 to the left multiplied by the cell 1 to the left. And then when I copy this down, again, the cell 2 to the left multiplied by the cell 1 to the left. And then I can copy it down. Type equal to summation of these numbers and it will give me my total revenue. Alternatively, I could have gone here, click, click. When I click, click it, it will copy it down up to the point that I have some numbers. Equal to summation. Click on this one, control shift down arrow. But it will bring it down up to row 12. I should go, because row 12 is where I have the summation. So I should go one row back, 11, and then enter. That is the summation. As you see, these numbers are continually changing. That is because I want my procedure to be independent of my data. No matter how data are changing, my computations stay correct. Here I have used rand between 1000 and 2000, which gives me an integer number between 1000 and 2000. Here I have used the function rand between 10 and 30, which randomly give me a number, which is uniformly distributed with the same chance between 10 and 30. So now I have this. I can also go here and Delete this one. Alt equal together. If I push Alt and then equal, it will automatically give me that summation. And this only works for summation because it's a function which is frequently used in X. So that is our explanation for relative referencing. Now let's go to absolute referencing. Suppose the problem is changed. Now, I don't have different prices. I have quantity sold and I should multiply by price. And that price is the same for all quantities. How can I do that? Equal to quantity sold multiplied by price and then click, click, I copy it down but it is completely wrong because it multiplies cell to the left to a cell which is two to the north. And that is not what we want. We want G2 to remain G2 no matter where we are because that is the price which is applied to all quantities. So I'll come here equal to quantity multiplied by price and I lock it F4. When you push F4, a dollar sign comes in front of G and a dollar sign comes in front of 2. So that means when you copy it down, 2 does not become 3. It does not become 4. It does not become 5. It is 2. And if you copy to the right or to the left, G does not become H, I, J or F, E, D. It is G. So now, if I copy it down, Click, click, 
quantity times price point. Because everything is happening in column G, and I'm not copying to the right or left, even if I don't lock G, that is fine. Therefore, I go here, again push F4, and the dollar sign in front of G goes away. But if I copy it down, formula remains fine because everything is happening in column G. If I don't lock it, I have not gone to H and I have not gone to F, I am in G and I remain in G. But two must be locked because all quantities must be multiplied by this price. Now let's go to mixed referencing. Suppose these are quantities and these are prices and we want to multiply quantity by price. Quantity by price. Let's go here. Equal to this one multiplied by this one. Enter and copy it down and copy to the right. 100% incorrect. We want to multiply 12 by 1839. But now this one multiplies one cell to the north by one cell to the left. So I'll go here again. This one multiplied by this one, F4. I lock it. Enter. Copy it down. Everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. But if I copy it to the right, this one, now it is one to the left, and that 14 remains over there as it was. So I go back here, equal to this one. This one I want to remain in column G. But if I come down to row five, six, seven, I want that to become five, six, seven. So I push F4. Again, I push F4. J is relative now. Again, I push F4. Now J is absolute and four is relative. And that is what I want. I copy down. Now if I copy to the right, it is still referring to the same first column. But I should multiply this equal to J4, F4, F4, F4. Now J is locked, but 4 is not locked. Multiplied by, I click on this, that is K3. F4, K3 is locked completely. F4 again, K is relative, but 3 is absolute. 3 is locked. And that is what I want. Enter. Copy down. Copy to the right. Everything looks fine. Again, J4. But this J when I copy to the right, I want J to remain J. F4, F4, F4. Now it's a dollar J4. I could have just come here also. I click on this, and then I can go in front of J and put a dollar sign. Multiply it by, and then I go to column K3. I want 3 to remain 3. Therefore, I'll go over there, and I put a dollar. Enter, and then copy to, to the bottom, and then copy to the right. Everything looks fine. And total revenue is summation of those. And so, once again, for the last time, equal to this one, J is locked, 4 is free, multiply by, F4, both of them are locked. Three is locked, absolute and locked. And then copy down, copy to the right, and everything looks fine. Let me complete this discussion by building you 
something that you had in your previous course of statistics, and maybe you have also used it in other classes, and that is standard normal table. Remember, you had a normal table, you should go to the end of the book and have Z value and then find the probability. Now I wanna create it here in Excel. In other courses, you were using tables, end of the book tables. In this course, we just use Excel. But just as a practice, I'm going to build you a standard normal table. Negative three, which is three standard deviation to the left. I'll go here, right click, come down, go up and leave it series with a step of point one, go to up to three in a column. Okay, so from negative three to positive three is filled here. Now I'll go here, I type zero, and then again, right click, come down, go up, series, in row this time, step up, point O one, go up to point O nine, in a row, okay? So I have this equal to norm standard distribution, norm standard distribution. What is your Z value? My Z value is this value, which is in column A. So I put a dollar sign in front of column A plus this value, which is in row one. So I put a dollar sign in front of one. And then that's a Excel parameter that if I want a probability, if I want a cumulative probability, I should put one over there. And then enter. And then I copy to the right. And then click, click. I copy to the bottom. And that is a complete normal table that you use it in your other courses, but not here. Here we just use the Excel function that I showed it to you and we will and I will explain more about it. Thank you very much for attending this session. This operations management class is very Excel oriented. So besides operations management, uh, you also improve your skills in Excel. You also improve your skills in uh, team building throughout the games, which form 18% of our uh, final grade, but because they are also in the midterm and final exams, I can tell you they are more than 30% of the total course grade. So that is an opportunity to improve your soft skills, teamwork, and here to improve your Excel skills as two byproducts of learning operations management. Thank you very much for helping me in creating a healthy academic environment for learning, not for stamping a degree. Thanks again.